Hi everybody, my name is Doug. I'm a member of the technical service group here at Task Force Tips. And in this particular service video, I'm going to show you how to replace the trip mechanism inside the Blitz Fire Monitor. Uh, a clear indicator that the mechanism may need to be replaced is when you open the valve. It should hold its open position when you release it, but if it continues to go closed regardless of its open position, then that's an indicator that that will need to be replaced. On the next screen, we're going to show you all the tools required and uh, parts to replace this mechanism. As you gather those up, we'll meet back here at the uh, service bench. All right, we're back at the workbench. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the main lid from the blitz fire here. It's retained with four screws. Using the eighth inch Allen wrench, go ahead and just remove those screws. Set those aside. We'll reuse those um, later on in the reassembly. Also set the lid aside. We're going to reuse that as well. Once we're in there, go ahead and just unclip the spring and set that aside. We're going to reuse that. That's the spring that pulls the handle closed when the valve is tripped. Next, we'll take off the right side handle using the um, 730 seconds Allen wrench. Go ahead and remove the upper and lower screws that hold the handle on. The upper screw gets reused. The lower one, we send a replacement in the kit. So you can set it aside or discard it. Now this is retained with red Loctite, the lower screw, so that'll have a little bit of resistance initially when you try to remove it. I will point out now that these are two different length screws. The upper screw is shorter than the lower. Uh, just keep that in mind if I forget to mention it later in the reassembly process. Next, we'll remove the retainer plate from the trip mechanism. Using the 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, go ahead and remove the three screws that hold that in place. Set those screws aside. We're going to reuse those later. Now, there's nothing spring-loaded or anything that's going to come jumping out at you when you take this plate off, uh, but just a little, make sure you hold these two little pins in place as you lift that off. That just helps keep the pins where they need to be and other parts stationary. You can set that plate aside off to the side. We're going to put a new one on that comes in the kit. Remove this little spring that's directly in the center. Pull it off the screw head and just lift it out. We're going to set that aside for reuse later as well. You can pull the trip block off. You'll notice on there there's two little Teflon washers. We're going to uh, reinstall new washers that come in the kit. That pin came out. We'll just reach and get that out of the, the bottom of the unit. We're going to reuse that. Remove the trip rod and ball. New items come in the kit, so we're going to replace those. You can lift off the leaf spring, hold that pin in place, and lift it up and off. Again, the kit has that, so we're going to set that aside. We'll reuse that later. Go ahead and pull the handle off. Set that aside. Now we're going to take out the detent block. The detent block is held in by the, uh, the trunnion that drives the valve open and close. So once you pull that out, this will come directly out. Dispose of that, we'll be installing a new one. Now the kit does not come with a new trunnion, but it's still this is a good opportunity to inspect this, uh, this square plastic um, insert. This is what engages the slide valve and drives the valve open and closed. You want to make sure that's not damaged or cracked or, or missing, if that's the case. Um, if that is damaged, um, you'll want to order a new one of these before proceeding uh, with the repair. Set that aside. That one looks good. We will reuse it. Now that leaves us a clean cavity inside. Uh, this is what it will look like once you've completed the disassembly. Blow out any dirt or anything that may have accumulated in there. Now, during the reassembly of this, we're not going to grease any of these parts. These parts do not receive grease in order to, to operate normally. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the new detent plate. Uh, you'll notice there's two sides of it. There's a flat side and a, and a groove side. Those are the detents that hold the valve in various open positions. There's also a nut pressed into it. When you insert that, the flat side should go against the casting and the detents will face inward. 
just set that down in there. Now you want to feed the trunnion back through the valve disc here, through the larger hole. And we're trying to get it to go into this hole here, so you may have to move things around just a bit to engage. And you want to make sure that's pushed all the way in and flush. If that's in flush, that tells us we've engaged the groove in the slider and everything's sitting where it should be. So if you can't quite get it in there, you may just have to move things around a little bit till everything falls in place. <coughs> now we'll go ahead and put the handle back on at this point. The two holes go down on the bottom, the single hole up at the top. Just slide that over the trunnion. Now, like I say, the kit comes with a new screw for the lower. It's longer. The lower one is the longer screw. This gets a little bit of red Loctite right out at the tip of the screw. Now, just a little tip. When you're putting this in, kind of insert it gingerly. You don't want to just shove it in there and knock that pressed in nut out. That'll if you press If you push that nut out, you'll have to take the plate out, retrieve the nut, get it all pushed back together. So just put that in till you just feel it engage, till you just feel it touch. And like I say, don't just push it in. Go ahead and just start threading it in. That guarantees you that you won't push that nut out of the detent plate. Just kind of make that loosely snug for right at the moment. Take the shorter screw. This one gets a little bit of blue Loctite. The kit does include the appropriate blue and red Loctite vials that you'll need. Just thread that in. Just go ahead and make that tight. And then go ahead and come back here and snug this one up. It's a good opportunity to make sure that things are still moving smoothly. That feels good. Next, we'll go ahead and take the trip rod and the trip ball. The trip rod goes into the groove first and sits back against the casting. The ball goes just ahead of it. Next, go ahead and take your leaf spring, These, the side with the two bumps that goes against the detent plate and slides over this pin. It should just slide right down and sit. Next, we'll take the trip block. The trip block has a pressed in stainless steel pin. That should align with the Torlon trip ball that's in here. Go ahead and just put that over the pin. You may have to move the leaf spring one way or the other to get it to line up in the groove. Make sure that's in there and things move freely. Taking the spring that we took out previously that was on the screw head kind of in here, go ahead and place that over the screw head on the leaf spring and then just set it down into this machined um, groove where the spring goes. And that will just sit there like that. What that does is that keeps the detent pressed against the detent block. Now, very important, the kit comes with two small Teflon washers. They're easy to lose, be careful. Put those on top of the trip block. There should be two of them. These just space ever so slightly the retainer plate off of the trip block to allow that to rotate easily. Without those, the trip or the retainer plate can push down on the block, not allowing it to actuate the way it should. Now another important point, you'll see there's a raised island here that sits over the trip mech or the uh, trip rod and ball, and there's a pressed in roll pin that acts as a travel stop for this trip block. Uh, far and away the most common cause of re you replace the trip mechanism, brand new parts, and you find it still doesn't work. Often I found what happens is the plate goes on and the roll pin gets tightened down on top of this trip block. You don't want to do that. You want that block to be able to move. So pull that trip block back out of the way, allowing the roll pin to sit beside it. This is all the farther that trip block has to move to operate properly. However, if you tighten down the roll pin onto the trip block, it can't move. So make sure that's positioned properly and has that little bit of movement. I 
Okay, using blue Loctite and our 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, we're going to re reinstall the three screws that came out to hold that plate on. Just a small dab of blue Loctite doesn't take a lot for this size screw. Go ahead and just loosely install those. Once you feel everything's lined up, go ahead and just snug them up. Okay, and then we'll lastly we'll put the spring back on. Just hook it over the front pin directly behind the handle. The pin right here. Hook one end over that. The other end, it may be easier to do it on the detent block first. Hook it there and then hook it over the pin. Okay, at this point, that is completely assembled um, without the, the cover on it. It's a good opportunity if you want to, to check, check your work to make sure it's working properly. The trip mechanism does not require flow in order for it to operate, so we don't need to be flowing water to check this. Um, Simply open it, and there's two methods by which you can check it. Open it, and using a rubber mallet, you can simply tap the side of it, and it should go closed. If you don't have access to a rubber mallet, you can take it and just turn it 90 degrees on the axis, and it should close. If that happens, then your work here is good. We'll go ahead, and we'll put a little blue Loctite in each of the retaining holes for the lid screws, and then reusing the lid and the screws we took off earlier, we'll go ahead and put those back on. Make sure you're facing the right direction here. The serial number uh, should be over the female inlet coupling. Using the eighth inch Allen wrench, we'll go ahead and just install these and then snug them up. That pretty well completes the replacement of the trip mechanism of the Blitz fire. If after having reviewed this service video, you find you have additional questions or concerns, certainly feel free to reach out to us. You can find all of our contact information at TFT.com, or you can also reach us at 800-348-2686 and ask for the technical service group.